It's been almost two weeks now since Erie County entered the green phase. That happened June 26th. In that time, a reported number of COVID-19 cases has remained relatively steady, ranging from single-digit numbers to upper teens. But it remains to be seen whether or not we'll receive a spike in those averages following the holiday weekend. Joining me now to talk about where we are and what we still need to do in this battle against COVID-19, Erie County Executive Kathy Dahlkemper. Good to see you, Kathy. Usually, um, usually it's on those uh, weekly briefings now from QLN, but uh, good to see you. When, good, good to be with you. Uh, when stay-at-home orders were issued early in the pandemic, uh, little to no coronavirus reported in our community. It was quite a while before we reported our first case. You know, so many weeks later, uh, we argued with the state over uh, reopening. Um, now that we're open, we have more cases daily and weekly than we did uh, in many cases before we closed. Still no vaccine. What do we need to do from a health perspective? Well, you know, the guidelines remain the same. We need to wear a mask, we need to stay six feet apart from people we don't live with, and we need to wash our hands frequently. You know, what that did by, um, actually across the nation, having the stay-at-home order, it has allowed all entities, including departments of health and our hospitals, to really gear up and be ready for when we did have to reopen, because obviously we can't keep our country closed forever. So now that we're reopened, we are a lot better staged to deal with any surge that might happen here. All right, at, at the beginning of the month, um, you know, Governor Wolf signed that expanded mask wearing order. Um, this, along with social distancing and, and the frequent hand washing, are the best known ways to combat COVID-19 at this point. Still a number of businesses that don't enforce mask wearing, though. Uh, how frustrating is this? I mean, your message has been consistent for weeks now. And, and how is the county working with area businesses to, to handle this? So I actually um, disagree that our businesses aren't doing this because I think the vast majority of them are doing all that they can to follow the guidelines. What the problem sometimes is, is their customers. Yeah. And they yeah. don't want to have that confrontation. It's obviously difficult. We know of some businesses that are actually bringing in de-escalation training for their employees um, because no business wants to be associated with a, a spike in COVID-19 or cases in COVID-19. They want to do the right thing. They want to keep their employees safe and their customers. And I, we have been working along uh, with businesses from the beginning. That would be the Department of Health through our environmental division. And uh, we've been there as a guide to them and as a, you know, give them advice. And I think our businesses truly are uh, being helpful out there. Well, I do have to say everywhere I go, it's a limited list. Everywhere I go, there's a sign right there on the door that says you have to wear a mask. Um, now, soon kids are going back to school. With that comes, you know, the increased risk uh, that comes with so many things when we get all the kids back together. Um, to what degree has the county worked with school districts to ensure student safety, especially when you consider, you know, cramped school buses? I know we talked about that uh, yesterday during the county briefing. Um, just a lot of questions. So the county, again, through our environmental division, has been working directly with our school districts to help them with the guidance that's actually coming from the State Department of Education as well as the state government um, and the governor's administration. Every school is a little different, so they've got to have their own plan. We are reviewing multiple plans, lots of plans coming in just today. Uh, that uh, group, that group that's out there helping schools, sat down and talked with the parochial schools. They've sat down with the superintendents of the 13 school districts. They're having a, a larger training where they're going to talk about the guidelines as well as talk about um, contact tracing and, and what we need schools to do in case there is an outbreak in their school. And so that's very helpful. Uh, just you know, less than 30 seconds, but um, are you at all loosening up uh, the, the, the activities that, that you do? I mean, you've said repeatedly um, that you, you don't go much of anywhere. I, I really don't. Um, I limit the number of stores I go in. If I don't feel comfortable, I don't go in the store. Um, I have only eaten in one restaurant outside in a, por a patio that was way spread out. Otherwise, I've just continued to eat at home, and I am going to continue to limit my activities in terms of being with large groups of people. I just don't think it's safe, and uh, I don't really want COVID-19, and we know it's out there looking for its yep. next host, and I don't want to be that host. Yeah, I know it's been your advice consistently. County Executive Kathy Dahlkamper, thanks a lot for the time here tonight. Thank you.